So as you know, this uh, wildlife bridge over the 101 freeway at Liberty Canyon in Agoura Hills has been a long-standing effort. Uh, it's a partnership, of, of particularly the MRCA and Caltrans, since MRCA is the landowner uh, on both sides of the highway, and Caltrans is the obviously the premier bridge builder, uh, road construction entity in the state of California. Um, however, uh, it is a widespread or, or a, a very well-founded partnership. The National um, Park Service has provided all the science for the last 30 years that actually proves up this location as the key linkage point, missing linkage between the Santa Monica Mountains, the Simi Hills, the Santa Susanas, and all the mountains to the north. Um, the National Wildlife Federation is the fundraising arm. This is all going to be funded, this bridge, by uh, private foundation grants, private grants, uh, donations, and uh, resource agency grants. Um, and also we have uh, the RCD of the Santa Monica Mountains as a partner as well. So, and of course, the Conservancy, as you all remember, um, has granted funds for this project, starting with a, an initial grant for a feasibility study, and then uh, a couple of years ago, uh, granted $3 million of our Prop 68 funds for the design and engineering phase of the, of the project. Uh, Wildlife Conservation Board and State Coast Conservancy have also provided significant funding. Uh, at this point, uh, Caltrans is uh, more than 50%, probably 65% done with their design and engineering work. Um, it's been a collaborative effort. National Wildlife Federation funded a uh, uh, consulting entity called Living Habitats that has worked on wildlife uh, crossings and bridges and other parts of uh, this country and Canada. Um, the the goal is, in fact, what 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 we're all looking forward to is having an actual groundbreaking, possibly by the end of 2021, um, and to create what would be actually, we estimate would be the largest wildlife bridge in the world, since it will span 10 lanes of freeway with 400,000 cars a day underneath. Um, the uh, National Wildlife Federation has been very successful in fundraising. We've got more than more than enough uh, at this point for the completing the design and engineering work and also a good start on the construction phase. Construction is estimated to, it may take between 60 and $80 million. Uh, NWF has lined up a number of uh, private foundations that are interested in helping do major, major donations to get, have the funds available to actually start construction. Um, I must say that it's also taken, uh, uh, both Governor Newsom has taken a personal interest in this project. Uh, we're very gratified by that. Um, board Member Pavley and Board Member Szymanski are also intimately involved with the, uh, the planning, the process, the, the science, and uh, uh, sort of the ongoing efforts to make this happen. Um, let, let, let's, yeah, here's one of the first slides. This is... Um, in fact, I would ask you all if you want more information to go to uh, savelacougars.org, and that's the National Wildlife uh, Federation website that's set up for getting donations, etc. Uh, next slide. This is an artist rendering. You can't in this one you can't really see that it's it's a crossing the freeway, and that's sort of the intent. So the animals will actually will actually be a recreating the the missing link that was created when the freeway was constructed between the Santa Monica Mountains and the Simi Hills. Next. This is an aerial view of what it would look like. It crosses both the freeway and Agora Road so that there's a, a good connectivity. Next slide. And again. Next. 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 And here's all the, a number of the critters that would benefit from having this seamless uh, ecosystem linkage. Um, we're talking not just mountain lions, which is our, our premier subject 
to get across the freeways and, and increase genetic diversity, but also uh, reptiles, reptiles, birds, uh, and other mammals. Next slide. Uh, this actually, this slide that shows a, the arrow pointing to a kink in the lion's tail, this is a Park Service um, recent um, confirmation that genetic inbreeding is starting to affect the lion population in the Santa Monica Mountains. This is kind of a common defect of, um, of inbreeding. So time is running out. Next. Roy, that's a slightly indecent photo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyone who has a cat knows that that's sort of a constant D. Uh, and this was uh, uh, August 2019 when Governor Newsom asked to see the project. He, here he is with uh, Seth Riley and Jeff Sickich from the National Park Service and Beth Pratt, who's the absolute dynamo with National Wildlife Federation, who's been uh, leading the fundraising efforts. Next. And uh, you can see Chair uh, Irma, I think, is back there with the pink hat yeah. next to uh, Board Member Pavley. Exactly. And Senator Stern next to Governor Newsom. Next. So here's the uh, the latest, and actually there's more than 17.1. NWF got another $500,000 donation just recently. Um, and I may, I will also mention that MRCA directly received a $1.4 million donation from a private citizen, a Pasadena widow, who had previously uh, uh, donated 600,000. So she's made a $2 million commitment to this bridge, which is, Pretty extraordinary for a private citizen. Uh, the comments are, are regarding. Go back one. Yeah, that was that was on the uh, EIR that Caltrans did. Um, it was overwhelming. We were really really surprised at how many people expressed support for the project, but very few against. And it's made a worldwide um, impact. It's uh, in media all over the world. Next. And here's a bunch of kids that came out a year ago uh, uh, for the uh, every year. Uh, Beth Pratt does a uh, she starts at Liberty Canyon Park Service, puts a radio collar that would ordinarily go, go on a line around her neck. And she hikes all the way from Liberty to Griffith Park as a sort of a demonstration of the movement and uh, for big parties at Griffith Park. This year it was a virtual P22 day at Griffith Park, but also uh, garnered thousands of viewers. And I think that's the last slide. Yes, yeah, so anyway, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me or Fran or David. Um, as I say, we're very excited. This is a, a huge effort. It's immensely complex. And Caltrans has been just an absolutely fantastic partner. I mean, this is sort of new to them. Uh, in California to do this kind of a project, and uh, they're they're all excited about it as we are. Thank you. Rory, I have a question. What is the budget total for this project? The total budget uh, from planning to construction is estimated to be upwards of $80 million. Um, part of it depends. We don't won't know until we get the estimates of utility relocation. Uh, some of that may get uh, may be lessened. Uh, Edison is being very cooperative, as is the Las Virgins Water District. Um, so, to be determined. Thank you. Rory? Yes, yes, George. Um, also, do you have an estimate as to how much um, the MRCA, the Santa Monica Models Conservancy, has um, needed to purchase property to facilitate this uh, crossing? That, that's a very good point. Um, I think we say hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent by public agencies, uh, primarily the Conservancy, over the last 30 years to protect these linkage spots. Um, I remember, I can't remember how much we paid for the Abrams property. That was uh, not Abrams, the uh, Carpeteria property. That was the, right. the site north of the 101. It was a at least two or three million, I think. It was a commercially zoned site that was going to be a, a for a commercial enterprise, a rug store. Your headquarters, I think. Yeah, we managed. And uh, 
Well, that was our first, and Joe um, probably can contribute. That was our, our first major effort associated with this wildlife crossing. And uh, mm, not exactly because we'd no? already we'd already done right. other purchases. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure that Senator Pavley remembers the exact amount on the Abrams property, which is the property to the south. Um, I don't know the exact amount, but I do know, George, that if it wasn't for the conservancy on the Abrams property, it was about 400 acres. It was all approved for development by uh, L.A. County prior to our incorporation 38 years ago this month. Um, they purchased it. They purchased the property. Had to wait till a willing seller for Mr. Abrams. The property on both sides of the border road. Uh, the Abrams property backs up to Malibu Creek State Park and now goes all the way almost to PCH. And then the Conservancy through studies by Paul Edelman and also the National Park Service purchased that property. And you mentioned the Carpeteria. That was an approved project for a huge furniture store. Um, and Joe, I still remember tearing down the billboards over there, which was great fun for myself. And, um, but it ties into Amundsen Ranch, so we wouldn't be here without this um, sort of good fortune of the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area being created, state parks and the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. They've, they've made this all happen. So this is the exciting thing about the crossing. The land has been acquired. All the exactly. way from 118 and connecting, there's there's wide corridors on both sides after you cross the freeway in either direction. We still see wildlife going on. And another critter to put on that poster that Beth Pratt shows around, we've seen probably 10 sightings of gray foxes in the last six months in Liberty Canyon here, cool. literally in the backyard. They jump over fences, who knew that? <laughs> so um, uh, the animals are out, they're waiting for the crossing. About 17, 18 million has been raised. We need, we need, you know, uh, some of those big donors. The last uh, state contribution was an exciting one last August, $5 million from the Wildlife Conservation Board. And this is because it was voter approved park bonds. It's out of resource protection bonds. It's not coming out of general fund from the, from the state. So um, it, it's possible. But um, we're waiting for that sort of big moment. We have potential of perhaps naming a crossing over a major uh, donor or foundation or an environmental organization um, to entice someone to make that kind of commitment. And I did look it up. Uh, Eric Edmonds was correct. The um, uh, Santa Monica Mountains Task Force of the Sierra Club did send in a check towards the crossing. I checked, he mentioned that earlier on. So uh, kudos to um, the Conservancy and MRCA. We wouldn't be here today without their involvement because it is probably the last space of over 2,000 foot wide uh, that's open on both sides of the busy 101 freeway. And we know the wildlife will use it. A mountain lion was killed about two months ago, about uh, less than a mile from this location. So. Uh, it's all, only about money now. The environmental yes. review is done. MRCA and Caltrans has a memorandum of understanding on the operation and the maintenance of the facility. So it is literally just about uh, raising the raising the money. Great. That's and right. Remember, get your checkbooks out. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember holding on to that rule along with you and many others of pulling down that carpeteria billboard so i have pictures okay <laughs> well you'll have to bring them for the, uh, the groundbreaking and i think that whole site george where that um sign was which is adjacent to where the crossing is uh will eventually be restored it's a whole riparian area that was filled in for a flat pad for the furniture store and that'll be uh, uh part of this project as well that's right. I also, as you alluded, um, Board Member Pavley, we actually have uh, publicly preserved uh, land, or at least privately preserved land, all the way from the Pacific Ocean uh, into Angeles National Forest. Yeah. So that's, yeah, under the 118, and it's 
Yep. And over the five and uh, onward. <laughs> Madam Chair, we have uh, Tim Wendler has his uh, hand up and then Ms. Parks. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for that update. It's great to see all the progress that's being made. Uh, Rory, is it possible to distribute the presentation to the board and advisors? Yes, we can definitely email you the, the slides that have actually contributed by uh, a National Wildlife Federation who employed the consultant. Great, because I know there's a lot of people throughout the entire region who are fascinated by this project and want to see it succeed. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Supervisor Park? Yes, and it is uh, it is very popular. It's one of the questions I'm always being asked. You know, uh, people are really excited. And with the uh, recent uh, opening of the one in Utah, boy, that got so much press. And uh, people from all over are now really got the momentum pushing for the Liberty Canyon one. So uh, we are hoping that it will uh, come to fruition sooner than later because uh, the longer we wait, the less likely uh, we're going to be able to continue uh, the mountain lion species out in the Santa Monica Mountains. So I'm really delighted to be a part of the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and for the funding that we have been able to muster as well as the state. It really does look like it's going to happen. And thank God for Beth Pratt, right? So thank you all for your support on this. Absolutely. And I see that you have on your screensaver one of uh, NPS's Mountain Lion Kittens. Okay, any other comments? What a great success, you know, for everyone. 